Hi, I'm Barry. My call sign as a ham radio operator is Papa Bravo 4 Papa Tango, PB4PT. This, together with my accent, is probably already giving away that I'm living in the Netherlands. I've always been surprised by the amount of equipment that ham radio operators seem to collect. And to be honest, after being into this hobby for about 10 years now, I'm just starting to realize that I'm no different. You are collecting so much stuff over the years, and you'll always find something that you'd like to add. Recently, I started using the voice gear in my FT991 to avoid that I would have to repeatedly call for CQ over and over again. By recording the text that I would normally say into the memory of the radio, I could repeat the same message over and over again by just the push of a button. And as this is a convenience feature of the radio, I realized how nice it would be to just have a button a little bit closer to me to avoid that I would have to reach over and push the button on the radio each and every time. So this started the journey to look for a solution for really a problem well maybe just yet another box in the in the radio shack after some quick search in in google and checking some local uh, radio shops in the netherlands yeah we still have a few luckily enough um i found this device the yezu fh-2 35 euros on this website and what it brings you is a little box with a number of buttons and a small cable that goes to the radio which can be an ft2000 a 950 hey that's interesting i own that one as well as well as an ft450 and it appears to work on the ft99 well ft991 as well if you look into the further specifications um 35 euros hmm not a lot of money, but for just a bunch of buttons and a little cable, I was thinking, can I make this myself, maybe? Um, and as you do, next thing was to go and search for what really is in the box. And it appears that there is quite some people on the internet that have figured that out and created their own box with some buttons as an alternative to this Yezu FH2. Uh, one of them I found is by uh, Victor Echo 3 IPS in the Papa Sierra, and he has this nice drawn up in a picture on one of his websites uh, showing what's inside the box. He didn't draw all the buttons, but mostly the five buttons that you typically use to send out a message. And it appears that, that there's not much more than just a button with some resistors uh, and pushing the button connects the uh, the resistor in place between the two pins of the three and a half millimeter jack plug that goes in the back of the radio. Well, is this worth 35 euros? Mm, well, maybe it could be a nice home project, I thought. And actually, that's what happened. I still had a box laying around. I didn't have the buttons. I have plenty of stock in resistors, so it should be possible to build something like this myself. After some digging in the junk box, I found out that I still had this little uh, aluminium uh, enclosure laying around. And I thought that would be a great candidate to, uh, to fit those buttons. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the buttons, but a trip that I made to a dump store here in the Netherlands, um, I noticed that they had a few very colorful momentarily switch buttons um that could work well so a little bit of drilling and uh, filing and playing around with the hardware i was able to come up with this solution um and as we've seen from the schematic that i had on my screen a moment ago 
um, it wouldn't be too difficult to uh, to build something that would do exactly the same as the FH2 by Iezu. Um, maybe not completely save 35 euros because this doesn't happen for free either. But at least I'd have the fun of doing a little home project. And as you can see, it looks reasonably well. I haven't had any numbers or uh, markers on it yet, but because of the colors, I wonder if I really should. To see what's uh, in the box and uh, what the result of my uh, homebrew project looks like, let's just remove the screws yet again. I've done a few already. Let's remove the last one and see what is inside. So this is a rather nice box, to be honest, maybe a bit of an overkill for the project. But here we are. You can see that there is uh, five buttons nicely uh, wired up. I even gone in, I've gone into the effort of putting a little bit of uh, printed circuit board in there. Uh, not really designed, but just uh, the standard uh, box with some uh, copper strips on the back. And uh, there's the uh, resistors. Um, let's take a little bit of a closer look, uh, just in case you would be interested to uh, build something like, like this yourself. It might be good to, uh, to know how I, uh, I ran this project in some more detail. When I started looking into this uh, even a little bit further, I found another picture uh, on the interwebs uh, describing the schematic for all the other buttons. And although my idea was that just uh, the five memory buttons would be uh, enough, I thought this was uh, good for saving in the archives myself in case I would ever change my idea for this project and uh, have a need for the other buttons as well. One thing that has been remarkable, though, is the fact that these resistors are not the very standard E6 or E12 range capacitors. And uh, there is a, uh, a typical two resistors in series to make a certain value. Uh, in the end, I started building a table and uh, found out what the specific values had to be for the different buttons. And like button number one has to have a value of 866 ohms. Button number two has to be 1,330 ohms. Number three, 1,820. Number four, 2,490, And button number five, 3,240 ohms. Well, those are not values that I have readily in my junk box. So a little bit of digging and thinking, and I found out that those values can be made by tipping, taking more standard values and putting two or sometimes maybe even three of those values in series. And that's how I ended up making this little table. I marked it as Papa Bravo for Papa Tango to kind of uh, remember myself that those are the values that I have built into uh, my project. As you can see, 866 ohms is a bit of the of an odd one, because if you take an 820 ohm resistor in series with a 47 ohm resistor, you're just off by one ohm. But eh, I could be bothered less, and I would think that could work. So I started building the little network of resistors as shown in the picture and put that in the box. Now, I probably have to pan back to my project and all of a sudden um, the layout of these resistors makes sense. And you can see that there is a top row, a second row, a third row, fourth row and a fifth row. And we see not only three, but sometimes even four resistors in a row. Uh, why would that be? As you can see, if you take a little bit of a closer look, um, switch number one has the uh, red cap at the top side, but also has the red cable. And that moves to my little circus board here. And as you can see, there's three resistors in a row. It is a... What's the value? Gray, red, brown, and a, what is it, gold band? 
a yellow, purple, black and a gold or a silver band. And then there's the third one, a brown, black and black and a gold band. Well, that is definitely different from what I wrote down in that little table. Uh, for button number one, the uh, the one that I have colored with the uh, the red cable and the button, it says 820 plus 47 to get to 866 ohms. Well, when I did that, the gray, red, brown and the yellow, purple, black together are exactly that. I measured the total value and noted that I was off by, what was it, 10 or 12 ohms when uh, reading the value with a um, multimeter. And I thought, well, um, does it really matter? I don't know. Um, but I also had the consideration that the values of these parts, which come out of the junk box in the end, uh, might be off right now, and they may even drift off further into the future. So why not try to be as close as possible to the values that I had on my drawing board? And so I measured all the uh, resistors that I had put together by putting resistors in series. And I found out what the differences were, were calculated the, uh, uh, the gap between what, it, what they should be and added another one. And as a result, um, we have three or four resistors in series to get as close as possible to our targeted uh, results. And that explains why I have done it this way. Maybe it wasn't necessary, but as a homebrew project, at least it was a great deal of fun. And it turned out quite nicely, even inside the box, as you can see. Uh, to connect it with the outside world, I have this little jet, jack plug that I still had laying around in the junk box as well. And that provides the interface to the outside world where I can put, uh, just uh, put in a little uh, three and a half meter jack plug that could go to the radio on the other end. And after putting in all the screws again, and I wouldn't bother you with uh, showing uh, how that was done, um, I have now connected this uh, little homebrew project to the radio using a little uh, jack plug. And let's see if it all works as designed. Uh, I have a few memories programmed already. For example, if I pr uh, push the uh, channel three button, it calls out for my uh, call sign. Papa Bravo for Papa Tango. That was the third button. So if I now push the third button here, which appears to be a the green one, we should get the same message. Papa Bravo for Papa Tango. And no surprises there. It just works. And that appears to be true for all the uh, buttons here. So it looks like we have another successful homebrew project. And uh, no surprises, yet another box in the radio shack. Hmm. I guess this won't be the last one uh, for the uh, next few years. Well, if you uh, like this uh, little video, uh, feel free to hit the, uh, the like button. It may help a little bit in uh, telling me that I may make, may want to make more of these kind of videos or even subscribe to my little uh, YouTube channel. Not much around yet, but who knows? Um, if you have specific uh, questions or comments, feel free to, uh, to leave them below under this, uh, this video. And uh, let's see how it moves from here. That's all I have for you now. Hope to uh, see you again.